friends, and welcome back to the sesh. I am Janelle, and this is Chicken Fried Charles. This has been his nickname for the past few weeks, Chicken Fried Charles. His sissies are not here this week. It's just Charles and I. But you know who is here this week? Sydney. Sydney's back. Yes, I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> wow, don't act too excited. Yes, I'm back. <laughs> just a little early today. Yeah, it is early. This is like the first <laughs> thing we're doing in the morning. What time is it? It's 9.50. Okay, guys, it's not that early. I guess, early. okay, it's not that early. It's not that pump early. Up, but... Pump up, pump up. I have my leftover coffee from yesterday. So that's delicious. Mm. You know, you're the only person I know that drinks leftover I know. coffee. I'm the coffee. only person I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you why. Because coffees are expensive and I don't like the thought of wasting them. It annoys me. So, but usually I don't drink the whole thing. So I will drink some of it and then put it in the fridge. And then I have a coffee for tomorrow morning for the next day. <laughs> no, Charlie, sit in your bed. You can't have coffee. Look at this guy. Bijou, coffee is not good for you. Sit in your little boy bed. So yes, we are back. It is an early morning sesh today, but that doesn't really matter to you guys because you listen to it whenever you do. Um, thanks for being so supportive last week on my first solo sesh of, I was not I was going to say the year, but it's definitely hasn't been the year. Um, first solo sesh of the season of maternity leave season. Kendall is still pregnant uh, when we were recording this. So, you know, who knows? Baby could come any day now, but she's still pregnant. As far as I'm aware, you guys have heard anything different this morning? No, no, I think she's still very yeah. pregs. Yeah, yep. very pregs. I'm actually going to be meeting with her in a few hours, so. I'll let you know if anything changes. But as far as I'm aware, she's super pregnant still. But she is just getting prepared to have a baby. I'm so excited. It's getting so close. Oh, my God. No time. I can't believe it. In no time, we're going to have a little baby here. It's so cute. Dude, it's like, honestly, I know I say this like every time, but it's like seriously crazy how fast yeah, time oh, yeah. has flown by. It's flown by. That's crazy. Um, But anyways... Thanks for hanging out with us another week um, without Kendall. I know it's not as fun without Kendall, but I'm trying my best to entertain you guys. And we actually do have a really fun episode planned for this um, week. You guys have been asking for us to do an episode that kind of focuses more on Corelli and Sydney because obviously they are a part of this show, but you guys may not know them as well as you know Kendall and I. So I figured that I would go ahead and poll you guys for questions uh if you don't follow us on social media it's the underscore sesh podcast be sure to follow us there if you guys want to participate in q a's and advice episodes stuff like that um so we took you guys's questions and i'm going to give them to sydney and corelli so that you guys can you know get to know them a little bit better because they're a big part of the show and yeah you guys have been asking for this for a while so i figured that this would be a good opportunity to do that are you girls ready? Yeah. yeah, as ready as can ready be. It's some good questions. People, actually, you guys left a fucking lot of questions. On Instagram, I feel like there's over a thousand at least. That is wow. insane I was, to me. Yeah, I was shook. Um, I went through it this morning, and yeah, there are tons of them. So we'll get to that in a second. Um, we also asked you guys on Twitter. So we'll kind of bounce back and forth between those. But thanks so much for all of you for sending in questions. I really appreciate when you guys take the time to participate in our um, shows. So before I, before we get into that, um, I want to just remind you that we are selling merch. This is one of the pieces. It's so freaking cute. I'll put a picture of what it looks like on the back. We also have a t-shirt of this. Um, and then we also have another t-shirt that's super cute. It's purple and it has like a little mushroom design on the pocket area. And then we also have a shirt that says like keep it fresh over and over again, like in a grocery bag format. Um, super, super cute. All of these. Oh, and duh, I forgot my spicy merch as well. We also have a crew neck that says spicy on the back of it with little chili peppers. It's so cute. And I really like that crew neck because it's super lightweight. It's good for the summer. It's not as heavy as this one. Um, so if you guys are looking for new merch, it's milehighermerch.com. And we are, I know for a while we were doing um, pre-order because we actually ran out of stock, but Sid, do you have an update? Yes. So we are receiving like more of those back orders like that we placed. So more stock is coming in. And then also Perfect. I was going to say on that spicy crew neck, just an FYI, um, 
it does run a little bit on the smaller side. So yes. size up on that one. If you just boom. Thank you for that, Sid. All this stuff is really high quality. It doesn't feel like some janky, you know, YouTuber merch, I guess you could say. Like it's really, really good quality. It's super soft. It washes really well. The colors are super vibrant. I'm really, really proud of it. So go on milehighermerch.com if you guys want to get some merch. Um, yeah, like Sid said, we are starting to get all those back orders shipped out. So just be patient with us because everything is shipped from in-house. Um, you know, we have our friends and family working on it. So it's not like there's just a bunch of, you know, warehouse workers. It's our own friends and family that are doing this. So your patience is greatly appreciated. Milehighermerch.com. Okay, um, next on the list of things that I wanted to do is I was thinking that it would be fun to start every show with something to do with like your high of the week. What was like the best part of your week or something that's really good that happened and then a low, you know, something that's maybe not so great or a flop or something like that. Um, I want to come up with a cuter name for this than just like high and low of the week because that's fucking lame. So that's what I'm going to turn to you guys. Let me know what we should call this segment and if we should, you know, keep it going week to week. And maybe some weeks we can have you guys submit your highs and lows and we can read them on the sesh. But at least for this week, I figured it would be fun to start off with us three doing it. And maybe Kendall will want to join with us when um, she comes back. But I figured I would go ahead and start mine. I'm going to start with my low and end on the high note. I really want to find a cute name for this because it's so lame to be like, I oh, wow. My high today. Yeah, my high today. What about like dinner table talk or something? Dinner table talk. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude, I used to do that actually. Yeah, it's like what family yeah, do Yeah, I at used dinner. to do that in high school. We call it round table and it wasn't even a high low. We just have to like bring some fucking random story to the, to the table. <laughs> Wait, that's cute. I love that. That is kind of cute. Uh, yeah, it was funny. Good times. Anyways, okay, my low this week is... Y'all, I've been really flopping on my vlog channel. If you don't know, I have my own YouTube channel. It's youtube.com slash Janelle Fields 1. Someone stole just Janelle Fields already, so it's Janelle Fields 1. And I have been posting vlogs on there for a few months now, but to be honest, I haven't posted anything, I think, in over two weeks, and I feel really guilty and, like, low-key embarrassed by it. But to be completely honest... um. That is my lowest priority right now because obviously it's not part of my job. I have many a tasks to do in my actual job. And so that kind of comes last in terms of, you know, just doing it whenever I have free time um, and stuff like that. So I haven't posted anything in a few weeks and it's really bothering me. I actually have a lot of vlog footage. It's not that I haven't been filming. I've been filming a lot. It's just that I haven't found the time to sit down and edit it all. Um especially after, you know, the majority of the work that I already do on a day-to-day -day basis throughout the week is editing. So it can sometimes be a little bit tiring to then go and do more editing. Um, but I am kind of putting this out there to hold myself accountable and challenge myself to do better on that and stay more up to date on my vlogs. Because like I said, I have a lot of footage. I just haven't had a lot of um, time to go and edit it. So I'm hoping that if I put this out there, it will motivate me to edit them and post them. So be on the lookout for that. I'm sorry. I know that you guys, some of you like DM me and stuff are like, yo, are you okay? Like we miss your vlogs. And I appreciate you guys so much for the support, like the overwhelming amount of support that you guys have given me on that channel. I'm so grateful for. Um, honestly shocked that any of you guys really care that much about what I personally do in my day-to-day -day life. But um, I am fine. Everything's fine. I've just been slacking i really don't have any ex other excuse other than the fact that like i said it's my not my top priority so yeah but be on the lookout because i'm going to get one edited and posted by the time this podcast goes live in fact i'm putting that in the universe right now by the time that you watch this podcast a new vlog will be up so go check out my channel <laughs> and there there's a way to keep myself accountable I have two days. Okay. Um, that was my low for this week. My high, though, you guys, is that I got to do my first harvest on my garden. Woo! It's amazing. So I have been... I have loved gardening for a few years now. I am not good at it. I do not know what I'm doing. I am not 
very educated on gardening, but I kind of just fucking wing it and see what happens. And so this week, actually last night, I had enough tomatoes to really do a full harvest. I got two Roma tomatoes out of my little plant. It was very cute. They're so perfect and ripe and red. And then I have two um, other plants that are cherry tomatoes. And so I got to pick some of those as well. And I made this really delicious orzo pasta last night. Um, and it was bomb. And let me just tell you, homegrown tomatoes are significantly better than store-bought. Like, significantly. I, I genuinely think there's a huge difference in growing your own tomatoes. And it's not hard to do because, like I said, I'm an idiot and I have no idea what I'm doing. But tomatoes are not hard to do. All you need is a pot and some dirt and a tomato plant. And I will tell you that growing cherry tomatoes is definitely easier, I think, than growing like bigger ones like heirloom or, or Roma or something like that. Um, I don't know why. I just feel like they are quicker to grow and they're a lot like they're you can't, you can't really fuck it up as long as you give them water and sun. So, yeah, highly recommend if you guys have never tried growing your own tomatoes, you should try it because they taste so good. They're so sweet and so juicy and like just so flavorful. I'm also growing um, a pepper plant, which is doing pretty good. I have two peppers. One of them still green. So I'm waiting for it to kind of ripen up here. But I have that going for myself. And then I also have a bunch of herbs, which I have a mint plant that's doing amazing. It's sprouting like crazy. Mint is like a weed, dude. You can grow mint so easily. That's another thing. If you want to grow something easily, grow mint because it is not hard to grow mint. And then I have a garden bed that has um, basil and rosemary and dill and cilantro. And my cilantro and dill are very pathetic and stupid looking, but my rosemary and basil are doing pretty good. So that's nice. But overall, I'm just really excited because I got to pluck tomatoes. Uh -huh. Do they, okay, so are they like sweeter? Are they just more no, they're like flavorful? so sweet. Yeah, they're more flavorful. They're really, really sweet. They're super juicy. I don't know. They just taste so much better than store-bought tomatoes. Also, I wonder if you can like grow tomatoes indoors. Like after after summer's over, yeah. can you, like do they, or is it super seasonal? Um, I think you probably could. It's just, it'd be hard because they kind of, they get, big like towards the end of the year you yeah know, they get to be a few feet tall so i think if you had the space and you had like the uh right amount of like sunlight coming sunlight in, sunlight and you know or even like a grow lamp or something like that yeah um i think you could probably do it i'm so envious of people who live in like california or arizona or something like that where you can grow stuff year round yeah because yeah in colorado you basically have from May to whenever the first freezes, which is usually sometime in like September, because all it takes is one night of it getting below freezing and everything's dead. <laughs> it's very sad. <laughs> but yeah, um, it's really fun. It's so therapeutic for me. That's like the main reason why I do it, because I just I love the act of like going out and watering them and seeing how they change every day. And it's just very satisfying to do. So, yeah, I love my little tomato garden it's very cute that is my high and low of the week um girls you want to start with your highs and lows of the week yeah you, you or me me go, go first. first yeah let's see i'll start with my low too just to get it yeah, out of the yeah, way start with the pause or end with the positive um my low of the week has also been my little side hustle really kind of so like this last week i've just like not had the motivation to like sit down and do it yeah and again like it is like on my like the last like, my priority list like everything comes first you know what i mean right um for people who are not aware what do you do what is your side hustle oh yeah i have a little jewelry um business called cositas co um just i make clay jewelry and it's it's, it's so fun. cute thank you no it's really fun and like I, it is more of a stress relief kind of thing but just like this last week it's been really hard to find the motivation to post earrings and like post listings and just, I don't know. I just haven't had like the mental capacity to. And that is something that I, I don't even want to say when I'll have like my next like listing. Cause I don't <laughs> right. even, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't want to like, I want to, I need to hold myself accountable yeah, as well, yeah. but I don't know when I can do that. <laughs> it's all right. um, 
but yeah, I don't know. It's just been, it's just been like a little like creative. I've been in like a little creative funk, I guess. I feel that. So that's my, that's my little, uh, that's my low of the week. Okay. My high of the week on Saturday, I went to Costco. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> that, that was a high. <laughs> <laughs> that was my high. Um, me and Adam and some of our friends, they have Costco memberships. Mm. And we went with them because we don't have Costco membership. Oh, my God. Dude, I... Had you never been? Uh, I had been, but, like, not... I had never been shopping for myself. You know what I mean? Like, I've been with, like, my aunt and stuff, but I've never been me it's so shopping. good. Oh, my God. Dude, I got... We spent way too much money, first of all, but they have everything. Yeah, they do. Everything. Yep. Everything, everything. Yep. Everything I could literally... And in bulk. Of, and in bulk. <laughs> yep. I... Mm. I don't know. What was my favorite thing that I got? Yeah, what did you get? Um, ooh, I got these boba um popsicles. Oh, ooh. I've I've had those before. Very good. Very, those are pretty good. I recommend. Um, they also I also got some really cute little bowls, some ooh. ceramic bowls. They have really ooh. cute kitchenware. Yeah, very cute kitchenware. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But that was my high of the week. Oh, yeah. God, I love Costco. I love Costco. It was a great time. Side note: last time I went to Costco, which was like two weekends ago. I met a um, viewer. Her name was Carla. I'm pretty positive that was her name. I'm so bad with names, but I try really hard to remember you guys' names when I meet you in public. But you were so nice. And for some reason, you're watching this. Thank you for coming up to me. You seriously made my day. I was like fangirling over you. I love meeting you guys in public. It hasn't happened that often. But if you do ever see me, like, please come up to me. You will not bother me. Like, please, 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 please come up to me. It makes my day. So, yeah. Anyways. Um, okay. Thank you, Corelli, of for course. sharing that. Yep, yep, yep. Sid, you're up. Okay. Um, let's see. So my low, and this is for last week. Yeah, just since we've Okay. You know, last, recorded yeah. last, I guess. Well, I wasn't feeling the greatest. I was dealing with some stomach problems. Oh, those are the worst, dude. Yeah, it was brutal. But now I'm I'm on the rise. You know, it's not perfect, but I'm on the getting rise. better. I'm on the rise. <laughs> Um, so that's glad you're feeling better. Yeah, and then my high. Well, this may not count, but this Thursday, like I'm going out of town to see my dad. Yeah, that's gonna be my high. That's but that's exciting. Yes, I'm really excited. We um he moved recently, so I'm flying out there with Jared, and we're gonna go check out his new spot. And then he's got cows now. (gasps) Yeah, he does. Yeah. He, Wait, like, that's so cool. I know. I was shocked. I was like, what? You know how to take care of cows? And he's like, well, they're tweens or teens. Tween cows. <laughs> so, <laughs> what is that? They're like in the middle period. Wait, that's like, so they're not, cute. They're not full cows yet? Well, they're, they are, but they can't. Um, they haven't had like babies. So they're, they're not like, you know, no milk yet. But yeah. uh, my dad's wife, her dad runs like a lot of dairy farms in or the process of moving the cows around and so the tweens are hanging at the my tweens. dad's place there the summer and then they'll move over to the other farm once they're oh ready my God, to that's be so cute that's that's amazing. amazing so is your dad just gonna like is he gonna hold all the tweens until the they're tweens. ready to go <laughs> yeah yeah he's, he's gonna be like the in-between he's in the yeah the in-between he's like we're there uh like vacay for the summer but he's like I, he's like they're so easy i just feed them grass and oh, they just eat grass so all day cool. cows are fun <laughs> I'm excited to see his cows. Would you feel comfortable telling the people where you're going? Like, obviously not the address, but like what state you're going to? <laughs> oh, yeah. So I'm going to California. It's like Northern California area. There we go. Yeah. I'm so excited for you. Uh, I know you've been wanting to visit your dad for a while, but I didn't know he just moved. That's so cool. Well, yeah. you grew, but you grew up in like Northern California. Well, not grew up fully, yeah. but you have spent a lot of time in your life. In right. That I area. was born there and yeah. I actually lived there till... I was eight, mm-hmm. but then my parents, uh, when I went to school, moved back. So I'd always gone back there for like as my home. Yeah, 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 for sure. I love Northern California. I'm gonna go visit one of my really good friends who just moved to Oakland um, in a few weeks. I'm so excited. San Francisco is like my favorite place in the entire world. It's the coolest city ever. That's gonna be fun. I'm stoked. What else are you guys gonna do there? Aren't you doing like a what was it? Were you like hike or like do canoeing or something? Oh, yeah. To wine bin- 
vineyards? Or yeah. Things? So, well, Friday we're going to go and do wine tasting because they're right by Sonoma okay. area. So we're going to go in that area to do, do some wine tasting. And then um, we're also going to check out the Russian River and like Bodega Bay. And that's where we'll try to do some like kayaking. And then you can like get off, I believe. And then there's different vineyards too. That's so, so fun. That sounds awesome, dude. I know. I'm excited. Sounds so cool. It's Yay. not so hot there either. No, Northern California is pretty cool. And like, yeah, especially where they're at, like they, the highest right now it's getting to is maybe 80, but it's not like the dry heat here. Because I feel like it's been so hot here. Uh, uh, yeah, it's been hot as fuck here. I feel like the entire world right now is just having a huge yeah. heat wave. I mean, poor Europe. They're getting like blasted with heat. It's hot as shit in Colorado, though. It's been like high 90s, which is, I mean, usually in July, it's like, high 80s sometimes low 90s like we'll get a high 90s day here and there but it's not for like days on end it's been like no hot. day after day after day after day it's been weird like you know like in northern colorado it's significantly cooler than southern colorado and yeah. i grew up in southern colorado and uh it's it's like heat waves it's just yeah. so fucking hot out it's there fucking hot man so like here like here the weather here is like it was when i was growing up in pueblo you know what i mean like yeah. it oh, wow. is so fucking hot like it would easily get 100 degrees over there but if it was 80 degrees over here over there it'd be like 90 degrees in denver you know what right I mean? right so yeah. yeah it's hot it sucks. yeah it's hot as suck. it's not very hot anyways okay thank you ladies for your participation in our high and low of this week i really hope we can get a better name one kind of like the um person that inspired me to do this was i there's this youtuber who's been on youtube forever her name is Lindsay hughes and she has a sister named megan hughes and they've been doing youtube for a really long time and anyways um Lindsay used to have a podcast and she would do like a segment called the flop and bop of the week or bop and flop and i thought that was so cute but i'm obviously not gonna steal her name or her you know whatever she called it so help me think of a fun name for this little segment you guys um and i will be on the search in the comments below so you guys often ask me what I use to get my hair so long and so healthy and so soft. And it's shockingly not a DIY product like putting egg in your hair or I don't know. I feel like one time I literally put mayo in my hair hoping that it would make it <laughs> a lot softer, which newsflash, it doesn't. But one thing that I really do think will make a difference in my hair is Vegamore. Vegamore has a clean and vegan approach to hair health and uses smart botanicals that promote visibly thicker, fuller, longer looking hair. With the help from Vegamore, you can get healthy, beautiful looking hair without the use of harmful chemicals. All their products are cruelty free and never contain potentially harmful chemicals like parabens or hormones. And they have something for everyone looking to improve their hair health. The Grow Revitalizing Shampoo and Conditioner Kit works together to create visibly thicker hair and improve hair from the roots. All you have to do is massage the shampoo into your scalp for 60 seconds and then follow up with conditioner on links and ends. It's as simple as that. Personally, I am super excited to start using their Grow Revitalizing Shampoo and Conditioner Kit. And with Vegamore, there is no risk when trying because they have a 90-day money-back guarantee. But with 91% of customers saying they saw visibly thicker hair with Vegamore in just three months, you won't want to run out. Give your hair exactly what it's been craving with Vegamore. Go to vegamore.com slash sesh and use code sesh to save 20% on your first order. That's V-E-G-A-M-O-U-R dot com slash sesh. Code sesh to save 20% at vegamore.com slash sesh. So before we get into your Q&A, I wanted to touch on something that I found, or actually no, Corelli found this over the weekend and sent it to us. And I thought it was super interesting. Um, it actually has to do with Britney Spears, who, as we know, has been out of conservatorship for a while now. But back on July 24th, so just um, two days after or before we're recording this, she went ahead and posted a series of screenshots, basically leaking these messages that were between her and her mom. Um, then there's some from her and her friend and then her and her lawyer back when she was still in the conservatorship. Um, and they were interesting. I just kind of want to touch on them for a second. So the first screenshot is between her and her mom. And she's basically saying, he was saying that he wants, I'm assuming she's talking about her psychiatrist or something, but she says he was saying he wants to up the Seroquel. And I'm like, whoa, horsey, go fuck yourself. Seroquel, I thought was a sleep aid, but it's for bipolar and is way stronger than lithium. 
I literally feel all the sick meds in my stomach. I feel like he's trying to kill me. I swear to God, I do. Which I thought it was interesting that she's just now deciding to post all of this. Um, and maybe like in a just for some context, I'll read you what her caption was. She says, it's a little different with proof. Here are my text messages to my mom in the place in that place three years ago. I show up because there was no response. When I got out, her words were, you should have let me visit you and give you a hug. So I think she's kind of trying to say like, I was reaching out to try and get help from these people and no one was willing to help me. Um, and then by the way, once she's posted this, she's deleted it since then. Like it was only up for like literally like maybe like not long at all, like 20 minutes. Yeah, not. Oh. Yeah. A few minutes, which, of course, when you post anything on the Internet, it's up forever. So people took screenshots of it. Um, And then she posted another one that was between her and her friend Jansen. And she says, also, what about the lithium levels, in your opinion, and it being monitored for so long? Of course, they can make up any excuse to keep doing it, but it is really healthy. And okay, I okay to give blood for that long. I have a feeling you will say I'll be okay, but it still doesn't make sense. It just feels like she's trying so hard to get people to like help her pay attention to her and no one is doing so because in her caption, she she says the second picture is a message to my friend from home. She was supposed to help me get a new lawyer. I never heard back from her. And again, you know, I don't know how accurate this is. Like these are just screenshots that she's choosing to release. So we probably don't have the full story, but it's kind of sad. Um, and then the last picture was a message to her lawyer um, that she didn't get to pick, which she's obviously very mad about. Um, it's between her and Sam. And she says, great. I want to talk to you about going to court when this is done and getting my medications right. My boyfriend, she has a lot of typos, but I think she's meaning that to say, my boyfriend needs the right to spend the night with me. How can I leave early? The plan I have you for last month or whatever the fuck these fucking people want from me and court my boyfriend needs to be able to see my children. She says, I've been in the conservatorship for 12 years. I want it over. I would like to replace two security guards with new. I would like to have a day in who comes to my house for security Uh, When this program is over, I don't want to work at all. I want to live for me and have an adventurous life. I want asshole Benson to let me drive again. I want to go on three vacations this year. Miami, New York, and I think that says Kauai. I can't really tell. But anyways, so she posted that as well. And it's interesting that she's all of a sudden choosing to do this after the conservatorship's been over. It just seems like she's so hurt by these people who, you know, were supposed to be there to help her and didn't. And then in her caption, she also says, P.S. My sister's text after not texting me for three days was, they're not going to let you go. So why are you fighting it? Which again, I don't know if that's 100% true. That's just according to her. But it's pretty fucked up. These people are pretty evil. Um, Piggybacking off of that, though, recently, um, a Los Angeles judge says that Britney Spears' father must sit in for a deposition with his daughter's attorneys who have accused him of running and hiding from an investigation into his alleged misconduct during her 13-year conservatorship. So that's very interesting. His lawyers, uh, Jamie's lawyers, say that, quote, they are, he is eager to testify and set the record straight. When the court has the opportunity to review actual evidence, not just the wild, baseless accusations being hurled by Brittany and her counsel, we know what Jamie will be vindicated. So they seem to think that he's done nothing wrong. And then at that hearing or at a hearing on July 13th, Judge Brenda Penny ordered Jamie Spears to be deposed by um, August 12th and ordered him to hand over more documents to related to the conservatorship. So this thing is far from over, people. Um, we're going to see, I think, a lot more stuff come out in the following weeks and months of just how toxic this was. And I wonder if you know, there will be any consequences for all these people who Bernie claims have really like abused her and mistreated her throughout all the years. One thing that's really exciting, though, is that Brittany is making a comeback. She is actually going to be releasing some music with Elton John, which is really cool. Um, they have teamed up together and they'll be releasing a duet of one of Elton's iconic songs, Tiny Dancer. I love that song. 
And I guess it's been reported that she and Elton got together in Beverly Hills last week and recorded the song. And it's supposed to be released sometime next month. Um, and I guess it was apparently actually Elton's idea to do out with her. Um, but I guess Bernie has been a fan of his for years and years. So I thought that was so cool. What a cool way to come back. Because she hasn't released music since I think her single in 2016, I'm pretty sure is when it was. Um, so I'm really excited to see how it goes. And it was interesting that like a few days ago, did you guys see that video she posted on Instagram of her singing um, Hey Me Baby One More Time? She sung it in like this super like deep, dark, I guess it was a lot darker and deeper than the song is like were originally posted. Um, so people have wondered if maybe she'll be kind of re-releasing her music in like her own in voice? her own voice. Oh. Yeah. Cause her voice, you guys, and we've talked about this before, is so different than kind of how she was portrayed in Hollywood for all those years. It's a lot deeper. It's a lot more like emotional, I guess you could say. So it'd be kind of cool if she did that. But yeah, her voice has way more depth. Than, oh yeah. Than just like this like high pitch. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. I feel like commercial they just shit. made her do that because it was like, you know, fit the narrative that they were trying to push on people. But yeah, we'll see. I'm really excited for Britney. I hope she makes more music. I would love that. I love Britney Spears. And Me honestly, too. I don't know. I've always felt a very deep connection with her. And I've never, I never really like grew up listening to her music per se. I mean, as I got older, I listened to her, but yeah. like I didn't grow up with her. Um, I don't know. She's like my little Sagittarius twin and I mm -hmm. really, really like her. I feel in tune with her and that sounds weird, Ooh. but I don't know. I really love Britney. I know. I love Britney too. But this is kind of interesting. I want to touch on this. So Britney has been on Instagram and she's posting a ton of nudes. I mean, granted, they're like covered up by diamonds. Like they're she's covering her nipples or her cooch or whatever. But overall, like they're very provocative, I guess you could say. And it's interesting because I have seen so many people coming for her being like, oh, well, you know, I was supportive of her ending the conservatorship. But after seeing this, like, I don't know about that. Maybe she should be in the conservatorship still. Like, she seems like she's lost her mind. Why does she keep doing this? Which I think is interesting because there are so many artists out there and just celebrities in general that post nudes on Instagram and people usually are like, hell yeah, like good for you, you know, pumping them up and all this shit. So why is it that Britney gets so much hate when she's doing the exact same thing? I think it's the weirdest thing why it's like such a double standard, you know, Megan Thee Stallion's posting fucking her ass all over the right. <laughs> internet, which I'm like, great, good for you. Kendall Jenner's posted straight up topless pictures of herself which is like, fine, I don't like do whatever you want. It's your body. But I just think it's weird that when Britney tries to do something like that, a lot of people seem to have backlash or talk about how like, oh, she's mentally unstable. She should be back in the conservatorship because she's doing this, yada, yada, yada. So yeah, I don't know. It's kind of annoying. It's really annoying. Yeah, I'm like in the comments right now and like, I don't know. They're like so judgmental. And this is the saddest display and her husband doesn't help her. Shut the fuck up. People are really annoyed with her husband too, which I think is weird. Yeah. I don't know. It's just um, annoying. People are just like very, they're just so judgmental of her. Well, like, I just, just don't get why there's so such a double standard. Right. Like most of the time when, when Megan Thee Stallion posts pictures of her ass on Instagram, which I mean, I'm all for. Love Megan's ass. But I'm like, <laughs> everyone's like, fuck yeah, like go off, you're a queen, whatever, which is great. But then she does it and people are like, what the fuck? You're crazy. You, you know, you should maybe go back into your conservatorship. Also, I think it's really important because she's been offline for 13 years or for so long. Maybe she just doesn't understand like social media etiquette. You yeah. know what I mean? Like that could very much be the case because like she hasn't been she, right. she hasn't been able to do it freely right. without people telling her what to post. You know what I mean? So I think it's more of like almost like a culture shock kind of thing. Yeah, totally. Especially because social media changes so much as time. I mean, if you think back to so what Instagram fast. was... Yeah. <laughs> 10 years ago compared to what it is now, it's so, so different. So, you know, it makes sense that if you didn't have social media for so long and then all of a sudden, you know, you have it, that you may be kind of confused of like how to even use it really, which then again, that creates an argument of like, is there actually a proper way to use social media or is it just fucking social media at the end of the day? You know right. I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess like, you're right. But anyways, I just thought that was kind of interesting. 
that she leaked all those texts. And I will be very curious to see if more stuff comes out throughout the months, especially now that her dad is um, being deposed. So he's being ordered to 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 bring those, those documents. Right? Yeah. So we'll we'll definitely maybe see something. Yeah, it'll be interesting. We shall see. Okay, people, are you ready to get in to your questions? I'm party people. There is a lot of questions, so let's get into them. I'm honestly kind of flattered that so many people sent. I know so many questions. <laughs> I know there's a lot, a lot of repeats, obviously. So I'm going to try and pick ones that I think you guys will enjoy um, answering. One of my favorite services that I have been using for so long now, since back in high school, is Audible. Because to be honest, I am not a good reader. One time in uh, high school, I took a reading test and I scored at an eighth grader. <laughs> to be honest, I'm just not a good reader. And reading is not something that comes easy for me. Uh, It's really hard to keep my attention span going when it's just me reading. But with Audible, it's awesome because I can actually listen to audiobooks. Audible offers an incredible selection of audiobooks across every genre, from bestsellers and new releases to celebrity memoirs, mysteries, and thrillers, motivation, wellness, business, and more. And you'll discover exclusive Audible originals from top celebrities, renowned experts, and exciting new voices in audio. As an Audible member, you can choose one title a month to keep from their entire catalog, including the latest bestsellers and new releases. And Audible members get access to a growing selection of audiobooks, Audible originals, and podcasts that are included with membership. And you can listen to all you want and more because every single month, new releases get added. One of the things that I love about Audible so much is the fact that you can use this app anywhere, whether that's, you know, in your car, commuting to work, or on a plane, on a train, doing grocery shopping, cooking, really, you name it, Audible is there for you. And like I said, I really loved Audible, especially when I was in college, in high school, and in my um, graduate program as well. One of the things that we had to do a lot in grad school was read different novels. And like I said, I'm just not that good of a reader. And so I used Audible a lot in order to get through those novels. And I enjoyed it so much more. I love the fact that you can hear the voices telling the story and they, you know, use so much more character when they're reading the story versus you just reading it in your head. So for that reason, I really do recommend Audible. And you can let Audible help you discover new ways to laugh, be inspired, or be entertained. And new members can try it for free for 30 days. Visit audible.com slash sesh or text sesh to 500-500. That's audible.com slash sesh or text sesh to 500-500 to try Audible free for 30 days. Audible.com slash sesh. So one of the main things that people are asking is how you guys like got to where you are now, you know, filming with us, especially with Curly, because I think people know that Sid, you've been Kendall and I's friend for a long time, um, you know, in college and stuff. But people want to know how you guys like, you know, became close with Kendall and I and started being on the sesh with us. Curly, you can go first. How did you even meet Kendall? A lot of people were asking about that. Um, I met Kendall in 2018. I think 2018 ish. Um, I had been following her for years. I'd been watching her videos for for a bunch of years, and I was, you know, I was just a fan. I just liked her videos, and I was a supporter, I guess. And um, <clears throat> one day she posted. I remember. I remember so vividly. One day she posted about um, Athena and how she had to, you rehome know, a, her. yeah, she had to rehome her just because she wasn't getting along with the other bunnies, and she was very, a very sassy bunny. She still is. <laughs> And um, Kendall had like a little, um, like a like a application, like a, like an adoption application. Mm-hmm. And I, I I filled out immediately. Uh, me and Adam were thinking about getting a guinea pig like weeks oh before. God, I fucking love oh. guinea pigs. They're and so cute. I never had a guinea pig or anything. And like I, I mean, guinea pigs were fucking adorable. But I don't know. Bunny sounded way more fun. <clears throat> and so I sent in my little application. I DM'd her on the Mile Higher Zoo page. Um, I did like three times. I was like, Hey, like I'm local to Colorado. Um, I, you know, your bunny is really cute. Like I could give her a great home, whatever. I was like trying to butter myself up. And, um, like a few hours later, she messaged me back on, on that, on Malhair Zoo. And she was like, Hey, like, I think you're a great fit. Um, when can we set, you know, when can we set a, a pickup time? 
And I think like the next day or that day or whatever, I went and picked her up. Mm -hmm. You were there. Yeah. Kendall made me fucking vlog <laughs> this. I was like thinking back. It's like the weirdest fucking encounter because I had her vlog and I, camera and I was like vlogging it, but I didn't want to like vlog Corelli, obviously, because like she probably wouldn't want to be on camera. And I was just like standing behind you guys like mm, with this. Was, Dude, I felt so awkward and weird. I felt so awkward because I left my phone in the in the car, so I hadn't seen Kendall's message message about you know you filming because she did tell me. Oh God, she <laughs> but, did tell you. Well, that's good at least. Yeah, no, she did tell me, but I didn't. I hadn't seen it until I got back oh, in the car. No. And Loki, I was not starstruck, but I was like, you know, I was fangirling a little bit. I was like, oh my God, like I'm meeting Kendall. <laughs> yeah. Like I and I, I swear I manifested. Kendall. <laughs> That's so funny. Um, no, so like years ago, like years before this, like maybe two, three years before that, um, I was watching one of her videos and I was like, you know, I can be friends with Kendall. I was like, Kendall seems like a really cool person. I feel like we would vibe really, really well. That's so funny. And then, you know, two years later, I adopted Athena and we just keep in contact after that. Like it was, you know, just how's Bunny? Here's pictures. Like, yeah. you know, friendly little like, how are you? Whatever. Yeah. Just, you know, little chit chats. Um, and then... You know, we just kept in contact for a while. And um, what was it? I think it was around October. It was like the fall of yeah, it was. 2019, I think. Right? It was before COVID. E yeah, I think it was. Yeah. I think it was before COVID. Before? Yeah. yeah. Um, no, because I we moved back when... But she was guys... already working for us when you moved back. No, not no, yet. No, really? I was, well, she I was start till that... I start. Oh, I officially started in January. February. Or, or yeah, yeah, January, February. But remember that, like a few months before that, I was like helping you guys with yeah. outlines for the sesh. Yeah, that's how Carly started. Is because we needed help with kind of like organizing the sesh outlines and stuff, and so we kind of like just asked her. Which I didn't really. I knew you, but not. Yeah, we, I didn't. How did I know you? I know I knew you. What, like we but didn't, not no we really no? didn't know each other we oh. only had, the only time we met was with the bunny with, with the bunny oh, okay and like we oh that's charlie <laughs> um <laughs> so cute um yeah and i i felt really awkward and honestly i felt really rude because i didn't like introduce myself to you personally because there was so much going on i was like i i, I just didn't <clears throat> i didn't yeah. get the chance to oh i didn't even think it i thought i was the fucking weird one with the camera <laughs> <laughs> i'm glad i'm glad it was mutual <laughs> um but yeah, so I just started doing like um, helping you guys with like with like planning and like outlines and stuff. And then a few months later, Kendall asked if I wanted a job with her with you guys. And so yeah. I said, um, yes, um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that's how I have got here. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. That's it. Pretty much. Yeah, it's been a wild ride. We love like, having you. I'd like to thank my uh, my great personality. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> my great personality. <laughs> you do have a great personality. Oh, thanks. <laughs> um, yeah, it's been really fun. Oh, okay. It's been great. Sid, what about you? Um, so well, Kendall and I met, gosh, it was twenty twelve then because we were freshmen in college and we both joined I met her by doing sorority stuff and um i had no idea who she was you know she didn't know me we just became friends um over that year and then we maintained or not maintained <laughs> we kept our friendship when she moved away from where we were going to school mm -hmm. and then i it was it, i mean we've been friends for so long but then jared and i moved to north carolina gosh i can't remember what year that was that we were there for two years, and during that time, Kendall was like, I want you to come back, and I was like, I want to come back too. Yeah. But, you know, a job was challenging to find when you're, like, in North Carolina, and then you have to, like, find it in Colorado. So, right. uh, Kendall, you know, was like, hey, we want to start the Higher Love Wellness, CBD, all that kind of stuff. So, I helped with getting that launched, and then now I'm doing the merch but yeah it all started through us just being um really close friends for so long so yeah and Sid like Sid she, she was saying how she works on a like higher love side or at least like at the beginning that was her main job and she just kind of came on the sesh just like as an extra voice and honestly just kind of like hang out with us because yeah it was fun um but yeah that's pretty much how they 
I guess I was going to say met us, but I already knew you said, which side note, someone asked, they're like, how did, um, like, what was your guys' first impression of each other when you met you and like me and Sid? And I don't know about you, Sid, but my first impression of Sid when I met her in college was I was literally terrified of her. (laughs) I was so, okay. So she was two years older than me in college, like two grades above me. And I thought you were like the, which you are the coolest, but I thought you were like so cool. So like popular, like not in like a mean girl's way, like a, just like a really cool girl with tons of friends. Like I thought you were so pretty and like you just, I looked up to you so much. I remember being like, God, I want to like be friends with her. And I was like, she must be cool because if she's friends with Kendall, like I know she's, you know, she's got to be down to earth, but I just remember being so like intimidated by you. (laughs) For a long time. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's so funny. Um, I remember. Well, Kendall would always talk about like her cousin, and yeah, you know, I would see photos of you, and um, I'm not gonna lie, I w- was nervous around any new people, and yeah. I know that maybe I didn't come off that way, but I was like always really shy about with meeting people, so I maybe came off quiet or whatnot, but. Not saying and you know, know, RBF is a real thing. Not saying that you have it. Not saying that you <laughs> oh, have it. Oh, I, I think we can all. I think we all have it. No, a no, no bit. I, I, I like legitimately sure. do. Yeah. Like I'm sure sometimes when I'm sitting here, like just listening, I'm like, why do I look so mean or mad? So, so miserable. Yeah. No, that's I'm really me not. Too. I'm smiling inside. <laughs> I'm smiling inside. <laughs> oh my god, that's funny. But yeah, that's pretty much how we all got to be where we are now. Um. So for you, Sid, there were a ton of questions about long distance relationships and because a lot of people are in them, I think. And you obviously, I guess for lack of a better term, have like a success story with a long distance relationship. Like you guys did long distance for how many years? Um, Eight. Eight. Uh, seven or eight years. Yeah. Like different states. That not like, oh, a few hours from each other, like totally different areas of the country. And, and for years. For years. And now they're engaged. And obviously they live together now. Um, but would you mind touching a little bit on that and how you met your fiance, you know, how it was during long distance and like what what would be like some of the main, I guess, things to keep in mind when going through a long distance relationship? Um, because I think people would really value your input on that. Yeah. Uh so Jared and I met, gosh, we had been going to school together since we were in elementary school. And then... That's the cutest thing ever. Yeah, I had like a major crush on him for a long time, but never, never like acted upon him. I guess he had a crush on me as well. That's so that cute. Is, yeah, yeah. That's, that's like uh, some storybook shit. <laughs> no, I was... Do you, remember, do you remember what grade you were in? Yeah, I was in sixth grade and... In my sixth grade yearbook, I will have to dig that up. I have a heart around his face. <laughs> That's amazing. That's so cute. Oh, I know. I, I was just, that. it's crazy. But then we went through middle school, high school, um, never dated. We're just really good friends. And he ended up going to play hockey for like juniors. And that's where you, you move to a different state and you live with like a host family. And it's really strict. There's not a lot of like freedom. He couldn't fly back uh, to stay more than like two or three days. Mm -hmm. And then if I ever went to go see him, um, I wasn't able to like stay with him or I had to stay in a hotel or stay with his parents. And then I'd only see him for probably a total of two hours, three hours of the weekend because he'd be like getting ready for his game and then playing the game and all this stuff. So it was very challenging. Um, during you know the whole process, I'm thankful that I was in school and I had you know a distraction kind of yeah distractions with friends and all of that, um, but it it didn't make it like easier at all. And I think one of the biggest things that I want I would share as to uh, advice or that I recommend is something I struggled with the most was being so fixated on. You know, if he was going to call me or if he was going to text me. And if he didn't, that would, it was like a make or break my day. Totally. And I allowed that to totally take control of me. So I realized that, and, you know, we did have a moment of time where we weren't together. It was only like six months. But during that time, I learned how important it was that I had to, 
how I had to, you know, do things on my own and also be emotionally like strong on my own. And if he didn't text me or if I missed his call or whatever it was, that not allowing that to completely ruin me mm-hmm. or whatnot. So uh, it wasn't wasn't easy. We definitely communication was the biggest our biggest way of you know growing our relationship. I would say our relationship was not necessarily like really growing fast or anything like that because we didn't see each other very often. So once it, thankfully after those gosh seven years, we were able to move to North Carolina because he got a job. And it was almost a perfect situation because we didn't know anybody there and we hadn't been like all we wanted to do is like be with each other and hang out. And so we moved there and we were able to just almost like we were starting to date or something like actually date, like go on dates and do things together. Totally. And not be like, oh, my gosh, we have to do this, that because I'm leaving or leaving. So I think just really trying to control be in control of your emotions as much as you can um, is a big thing. I really respect the fact that you're being honest in, in the fact that it's like, it wasn't, you know, all easy. Like I remember in college, like there was a night where it was like really tough. I don't, maybe like yeah. you guys were fighting or something. I don't remember. And I think it's really important to, you know, highlight the fact that it it's not easy and there were hard times and, yeah. you know, the expectations of like, oh, well, you know, it it was fine, you know, we we made it work no matter what. Like that's great and all, but also like it's hard sometimes and you know, sometimes yeah. it doesn't always work out. And I think for you guys it did obviously work out and so, you know, that was really telling of how you guys are really meant to be together because all that time and you still ended up together. But I think for a lot of people that might also be telling of like maybe that's not your person. Um, and that's okay. You know what I mean? Right. And, I mean, that's a big thing too. I think during that time we were away, it was a big thinking period of, okay, you know, what do we continue this or cause almost saying, okay, if we do continue this, we both know what we both, what we have to put in in order for this to be, you know, successful. Mm-hmm. So then at that point we knew how important it was, you know, for me to have, for him to like, do communicate to me specific in certain ways and for me to understand certain things, but it almost took us to the, to like, we had to get to a struggling point mm-hmm. to realize, okay, well, in order to make this work, these are the things that we both uh, need in the relationship. So definitely. Yeah. Yeah. What would be like your biggest piece of advice for someone who's going and through a long distance relationship? Have you had to tell them like one thing? I think the biggest thing is to have trust in your relationship and with the person that you are doing long distance with and, you know, reminding yourself that they're with you and finding, you know, that security in that. And the fact that you guys are together and may not physically be together, but not letting your mind like spin off. So trust and secure being. I feel like. Well, I've never been in a long distance relationship, but I feel like the one thing that would be really important and it's just important in every relationship in general is having your own life outside of that person, especially if you are long distance because you don't see them every day. So like you said, if, you know, your whole life revolves around them and you miss that phone call, well, then you're fucked, right? Yeah. And so I think it's important to have, you know, your own hobbies, your own friends, your own interests um, outside of just that person. Definitely. Yeah. And I don't know, in my mind too, you just, it's patience and it's almost like if you're going to choose to do a long distance relationship in my mind, it's not, you're, you're choosing that. So you know that they're not going to be there and there's going to be some hard nights or some sad times. Yeah. But knowing that when you do get together, if having that, you know, bond together is important. Right. I don't know if it's worth it. It will work. It won't be easy, but it will work. Yeah. You just got to stay strong and push through it. That's that's really all I told myself. <laughs> True that. Thanks, Sid, for yeah. opening up about that. Okay. Um, more lighthearted. What is your main three zodiac signs? Mine is Leo Sun. It's Leo season, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh my god, did you almost just fall? A little bit, but I was I was just so excited for Leo season. <laughs> Leo's <laughs> just fall out of your chair. Leo's is an ex- so excited you're gonna fall out of your chair. Um, I'm a Leo Sun, Capricorn Moon, Virgo Rising. Carly, what are you? I am a Sagittarius Sun, Taurus Moon, Capricorn Rising. Boom. Um, I am not sure what my third one is because <laughs> Cindy's not as into astrology as, as well, me. That's okay. I just can't remember, but I I'll look up. That. I can find it for you. Okay. I know, but you're a Taurus Sun. Mm-hmm. And I believe I'm a Gemini. I think you have some Gemini in you. Moon. I'm, because you and you and Jared. And my dad's a Gemini. Isn't that crazy? Oh, wow. Oh, really? Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so you're a Taurus sun, Gemini moon, Gemini rising. Boom. Boom, double gem. Those are the Is top Is that why I three. get along with Geminis? Or? Could be a, a big reason. I mean, Jared's a Gemini, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. I love Geminis. They're hilarious. Um. Okay, let's see. Yeah. If you were not podcasting, what would you want to do? And I'm going to also say, like, if you just weren't working where you are right now, because obviously Sydney's main job is not podcasting. She does like a lot with the merch and higher level and stuff. Um, so if it wasn't what you're doing now, what would you do? That is challenging because I only did so much college. So that was another one. If you guys did attend college, what were you majoring in? Um, I was majoring in PR and advertising. And I guess if I wasn't doing what I am doing now, I would like, well, I'd want to be doing something similar because I enjoy managing projects and... Like product development and stuff? Yeah, product development or project manager kind of a thing. Something along Hell those yeah. lines. Well, when I was in school, I was a psychology major. But if I wasn't doing this right now, fuck, I don't know. Be homeless. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> no, I, I don't know. I think, I think I would like really start my own business. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like whether it be. No, I LLC wouldn't. No, I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. <laughs> Can I keep that in if you want? Yeah. <laughs> I'm a liar. No, I don't know what I would be doing. I would, I mean, Bartending? I was. Bartending? Oh my God, that's really funny. No, I'm really not good at serving. Oh. No, I, I was in the food industry. I w- worked one food industry job and it was not really fun. Okay, you can pass. I pass. <laughs> okay, Curly passes. <laughs> okay, Um. this one says, how do you deal with negative comments that you all get sometimes? Fuck the haters. Just kidding. Um, mm, no, fuck the haters. I mean, luckily, I think overwhelmingly, majority of you guys are super, super sweet and positive. Um, obviously, there's some assholes out there. But for me personally, I'm not here to make everyone like me because that's literally impossible. Whether you're on the internet or not, like even in just your life. It's impossible to make everyone like you. So why would you try to do that? I don't know. It just seems like it's going to run you into the ground. And I know who I am. I know I'm a good person. I know I have good you know, morals and stuff. And so if people like question that or hate on me, well, then you don't really know me. So like, I don't know. And who are you? You're like on the internet. I don't really care. As long as people around me who I love know that I'm a good person and I know that I'm a good person. Like that's really what matters the most to me. Um, And also the fact that you still took the time to (laughs) click on my shit and fucking comment on it. So you're still giving me engagement. And obviously I must be doing something right. If I'm on your mind that much for you to comment about me. So thank you. (laughs) So thank you for that. (laughs) <laughs> that's such a Leo ass thing to say. Like, you're still thinking about me. <laughs> I don't know. That's kind of how I see it. I just try and focus on like the overwhelming majority of people who are positive. Yeah, I would say similar. Like, thankfully, I haven't gotten much hate. Like, you know, I've I've yeah. seen comments here and there, but like, I guess like de- like to like DMs and stuff. They, yeah, you know, things I haven't I haven't gotten much of that. But um. Yeah, like, I mean, as long as you know who you are and you stay true to that, they they literally have no idea who you are. Yeah. They only see, like, they see, like, this tiniest sliver of 
you from from the internet and mm-hmm. that really doesn't represent everything I am um so yeah I mean it I mean sometimes it hurts but also like you have to remind yourself that those words literally don't really mean much they they as long as you as long as you don't like let it don't let it like like linger and like um, yeah steep I guess is if you let it like steep and if you let all these comments get to you me um and, like don't go back and reread them right yeah. Yeah. Like, don't like hyper focus like don't like fixate on them because yeah. that's not gonna get you anywhere no. I kind of laugh at them sometimes. Me like, too. I think it's funny that when someone makes like a somewhat neg- if it's a negative comment towards, I mean, myself or just anything, I'm just like, that's funny. Like, I don't know. I just think it's funny that you like you think you know me. Sometimes I like agree with them. Though, like, I think the number one criticism I get is that I'm annoying and like loud, which I know that. I know I'm annoying. I am. I live with myself 24 seven. I know I'm annoying. <laughs> like, or like how I'm awkward or something. Right. Or I seem like kind of nervous. Yeah, I'm kind of an awkward person. And my <laughs> stuttering. I, oh, I know about that. I know. <laughs> right, it's like, oh, you think I don't know this? <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh, but, I, I know. And I, I live. I literally live with it. So thank you. Thank you for that <laughs> so much. Yeah, I know I'm annoying. Like, I don't know what you want. Me, just don't be friends with me then <laughs> i don't know i knew that there were people in you know college that probably couldn't stand me because we're totally opposites and that's completely fine you know like not everyone needs to like you you're not everyone's cup of tea and my favorite saying ever is what someone else thinks of you is none of your fucking business it's so true what someone rando on the internet thinks of me is none of my business like that's fine they can think whatever they want there's plenty of people online that i'm annoyed with that i wouldn't want to be friends with in real life and like that's not gonna affect them you know mm-hmm. we don't all have to be the same type of person because then the world would be boring so i don't know that's got anything else to add for that girls no yeah. i think i think we said it all <laughs> <laughs> I think we said it all you know when you're running a small business every second counts and you can't afford to waste a single moment so why are you still taking the time out of your day to go to the post office when you could be using stamps.com instead Stamps.com makes mailing and shipping quick, easy, and cost-effective. For more than 20 years, Stamps.com has been indispensable for over 1 million businesses, and Stamps.com gives you access to all the post office and UPS shipping services you need right from your computer. And you can get discounts you can't find anywhere else, like up to 30% off USPS rates and 86% off UPS. And what's so great about Stamps.com is you probably have all the equipment you need right at home already because all you need is a regular computer and printer. You don't need any special supplies or equipment, and you can be up and running in minutes, printing official postage from any letter, any package, anywhere you want to send. Plus, Stamps.com seamlessly works with Shopify, Amazon, Etsy, eBay, and more. So whether you're an office sending invoices, an Etsy shop sending your products, or a warehouse shipping out orders, Stamps.com is your mailing and shipping solution. Here at Mile Higher Media, we use Stamps.com every single day to ship you guys our merch, and it is so seamless and easy to use, I cannot recommend it enough. And we also use it to ship out our wellness products at Higher Love Wellness. So stop wasting time and start saving money when you use Stamps.com to mail and ship. Sign up with promo code SESH for a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and a digital scale. And there's no long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to stamps.com, click the microphone at the top of the page, and enter code SESH. What is our favorite memory together, all three slash four, if Kendall was here? I know mine. The night we went out. Yeah. I was going to say the night we went out. Yeah, that was really fun. That was really fun. That was really, really fun. Yeah, this is a long time ago. We need to go out again. And Kendall needs to pop out this baby. I know. (laughs) We need to get back out on the town. Yeah, us four went out and it was just a really fun time. We just acted like idiots all night and got super drunk. And yeah, I don't even really remember the rest, to be honest. No, remember we walked for like a mile? Yeah, and you were in heels. God bless you. I was in Burke, so it was fine. But you were in like, you were in the cutest shoes. They were like straight stilettos. Yeah. They were, yeah, they were not comfortable. And you were like, it's fine, it's fine. And we were walking around Rhino and stuff, and you were like, oh. you are like, yeah, low-key, it's, it's fine. They're like, as your feet are like bleeding, basically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got home and I had so many fucking blisters. <laughs> oh, God. The liquor makes it not hurt in the mo- in the meantime, though. Yeah, and that's that's exactly what I need yeah. in the wild. Yeah. During the, during that. Or on the... um. 
during the Christmas party. That was really fun. We oh, went out afterwards. Oh, that was so much fun. That I was, was really so fun fucked too. up. Yeah, that was a really fun. <laughs> God, I like just that's the night I destroyed my feet. Holy oh, yeah, shit. Because you were wearing still like little were stilettos, but you were wearing pretty high heels too. Yeah. And they were just had no support. Oh my God, my feet hurt so bad. That was a lot of fun. It was. It was a lot of fun. There were a lot of people asking about talking about getting a master's degree in counseling. If you guys want me to go into depth about that, I can. I'm not going to do it today because that's not really the point of this um, podcast. But if you guys want an episode going into depth about like school and stuff, I can do that. I don't know how interested you guys would be. Like that doesn't really apply to a lot of people, I feel like. But I do get weirdly like a lot of comments every time we ask about a Q&A. So maybe that's something I'll do in my own channel. Um, but let me know if you guys want something like that. I can do it. Okay, who is everyone's dream guest on the show? Ooh, I have I have quite a few. I don't know who mine would be. Probably like Jenna Marvels. I fucking stand her, so. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Honestly, I love Morgan Adams so much. Me too, I love her I too. I would love for her to come on the show. I would too. I and like she lives Pauline. in Colorado. So. Yeah, she does. And, you know. What did you say, said? Colleen Ballinger. Oh, yeah. Stan of her. <laughs> I fucking love Colleen. I've been watching her forever. That would be cool, too. I don't think she has any idea who we are. That would probably never happen, but yeah. it would be fucking sweet. I think I saw one. It was like, and we don't have to do it, but what if, like if you were an alcoholic drink, what? Would oh, be? yeah. That is a good one. If you were a alcoholic beverage, which would you be? I would say I'm a mule. Oh, and why is that? <laughs> because I'm simple, but sometimes there's a little surprise in there. Oh. And that's me. Okay. Yeah. I feel that. I'm what, not the, what's the surprise in a mule? <laughs> you know. The lime? You'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's fair. <laughs> no, but, you know, like like a... Like a lemon yeah. ginger mule. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Or like, like a little you know, twist. Yeah, like a cranberry mule. There's or a like twist a, yeah, there's, I'm, yeah, I got twists. Twists and turns. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I yeah. feel that. Yeah. Hell yeah. So yeah. what about you? Um, I would be a frozen <laughs> mango margarita mm. with a tahini rim because I'm a little shit. spicy. Ooh, wait, mine's boring. Damn, that's good. I thought good. about that. <laughs> Already? That's good. <laughs> Cindy's been preparing all night. <laughs> that sounds so good. That sounds mm. amazing right now. Have you guys ever had mangoñadas? No. Mangoñadas? They are. Have you ever had one? The chili on the mango? The mango? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Like, a, like a mango chili. It's like a mango sorbet, mm. but they put tahini and chamoy on, like, all around it, and they put fresh um, mango on top with um, little like tamarind candies and extra tahini. Mm. I want to like tahini so bad. This is my biggest complaint in life right now. <laughs> I want to like tahini. It looks so good. It smells so good. It like just looks so fun. But I just am not a big fan of it. And it's bo it bothers me so much about myself. Like I want to like is it, it the so bad. Spicy? Is no, it spicy? No, it's not the... spicy. It's just like not the best flavor for me. I don't even know. I get okay. what you're saying. Because I, I used to not like it. It used to like, kind of give me just like... I don't know how to explain it. I just didn't like the taste, but I, I don't know. Ever since I've been drinking it with Margs, I feel like you didn't like it with the frozen. Um, oh, yeah. I had it a few weeks ago. It was the best I've ever had. Like, I think it's maybe slowly starting to grow on yeah, me. Either that or I'm just, just convincing keep... it in my little pea brain. I'm like, no, you like it. <laughs> but I used to be like, definitely no. Now it's kind of like, okay. Like, it's not that bad. I'm I'm a little crazy. Sometimes I'll just go in. I'll just like oh, put really? it on my hand and lick it. <laughs> like yeah. It? Yeah, I also love it with orange slices. Ooh, it is the now best that actually with orange mm. slices. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Cuz you need like a little bit of like that acidity totally. to kind of cut that it's, yes. a, it's it's not spicy at all. But you need that acidity to like cut that flavor and make it more flavorful. Flavorful. Okay, another question that was asked a lot is that people are wondering Carly specifically if you are if you are from Mexico and if you are not, then where in Mexico do you have family members? Or but this I also applies yeah. to uh, Sydney, too. I don't know if you guys know that, but Sydney has family in Mexico as well. So yes. both of you have at it. Um, I am not from Mexico. I am first generation, though. Well, my OK, so it's a little complicated. Um, I am technically first generation. Um, 
my dad is from Mexico. My dad's from Chihuahua. Uh, my mom's family's from Durango. My mom was conceived in Mexico, but she's the only one in her family that was born here. Got it. So she kind of like was just lucky and born here. Um, but no, like all my family's in um, Chihuahua and Durango. Um, I didn't grow up in Mexico at all, but we would go every um, every Christmas, like Christmas break, two, three weeks, we'd go every, every year. So very good. Sweet. Yeah. And you can speak Spanish. Oh, yeah. And I'm fluent in Spanish. Yeah. See, that's the one bummer. Well, so my mom was born in Mexico, in Monterey, Mexico, and um, we still have family back there. So I, first generation as well, but unfortunately, I don't speak Spanish because my mom, um, well, this is what she says, that since my dad didn't speak any Spanish, he only spoke English, she said it was very challenging to speak Spanish to my sister and I because then he would just speak English and it was like a wash. But I can understand for the most part, I can understand when people are talking, you just have a hard time responding. Yeah. So, yeah, but still grew up in a Hispanic household. I, I saw something on TikTok that was really interesting. Um, it was this this parent, this mom. She does this practice, I guess, with her, with her children mm-hmm. called Opal, One Parent, One Language. So... Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so... For both her and her partner, one speaks English only, one speaks English and French, I believe. So the, the the parent who speaks French only talks to the kids in French, whereas the English parent only talks to them in English. Interesting. Mm-hmm. And that's like, uh, and honestly, I I kind of grew up like that because my dad doesn't speak any English. Um, so with my dad, I mean, I I grew up speaking Spanish first, like yeah. before school and everything. Like my grandma spoke, like my grandma lived with us my entire life. Um, my dad doesn't speak English, like, n- like they don't speak English, so I couldn't not communicate with right, them, you right, know what right. I mean? Totally. So I, I don't know, in a way, like, I think that, that that is very, that's really interesting because that's how I learned it. Like, I only spoke English to my, well, not only, but I mostly spoke English to my mom and only Spanish to my dad. And I think that's why I learned it and I, I still have it mm-hmm. is because, well, obviously I needed to communicate with my family. Right. But it was... I don't know. It was just interesting that I saw something online about it. Yeah. I didn't know that huh. that was like a That's actually a thing. really cool. Yeah. I wish um, Americans took more priority in learning, you know, more than just one, one language, language because it's so common in other parts of the world to learn multiple languages. And in America, it's just not that way, which is very annoying. And like, I feel like you're right. Like in a lot of other countries, people speak three four languages yeah. like fluently oh, yeah. totally yeah. i wish nope not americans because we're stuck up assholes a lot of people had questions for sid and i about wedding planning this topic is <laughs> annoying to me not gonna <laughs> lie i don't know at all what i want to do big part of me just wants to go like into the mountains alone and get married or literally sign a piece of paper. I don't know. The thought of like planning a big wedding is not interesting to me at all. Just me personally. I don't want to pay for it. I don't want to plan it. Everyone says that you're kind of just throwing a party for everyone else and you barely even remember your own wedding. Um, They're extremely expensive. <laughs> I don't know. I'm so, I sound so negative, but it's true. Like John and I just don't. Every time we talk about it, we just get stressed out to be completely honest. I don't know. Would you guys even like, would you guys want to do a, big wedding or is no no you, but you'll, you can only remember we were chatting about this it's like so hard because it's like no you don't want to do a big wedding but then you're like sitting, remember we we're like sitting there and yeah. you're like but then we gotta invite this and this right. and that you so know? it's like for instance um my family and sydney threw a engagement party for john and i and it was amazing there was like probably 40 45 people there so i was like oh well if we invite it like if we did the quote a quote unquote big wedding to me is like inviting those people. So like that would be great and all, but then there were a handful of people that were not there that I would also want to invite. And then I'm sure you guys can relate to this out there. There are people who you feel like you have to invite that you necessarily, and this sounds kind of fucked up, which, but it's like <laughs> honest, like not necessarily you wouldn't desperately want them there, but you obviously feel like you need to invite certain people. And it's just, that's just literally the name of the game, right? So I feel like, by the time you start making this list, it's huge. And then all of a sudden you have like 70 people, which I guess to some people is nothing. But to me, that seems like a, a big wedding. So 
And then you're paying for all these people. And, you know, then you're like, what? Do you have plus ones? I don't know. It just seems... Yeah. So now I can't talk annoyed. about it. No, I like really can't I know, talk about it. We were like talking about it the other day and by the end of it, you're like, I just, I can, can't do it. And then John's like, Janelle, we can do this. <laughs> <laughs> I get so stressed. <laughs> no, I mean, so Jared and I are, we, we did pick a date and, you know, we, it's very hard because we want to do a wedding, the traditional style wedding. Um, it is extremely expensive, and so that's something we're, you know, navigating and whatnot. But my family is very large, um, and then with family members comes their significant others. And so, yes, we're kind of at this point of how many people do we invite? But it's, we're, like, looking at the list, and, like, I did it. I split up our list in the sense, like, Jared, under Jared, and then myself. It yeah. was easier to account for. And then I did like grouping of like our friends or right. know, people we want there. And so it, my family list is like almost double his. That's how mine would be so, too. <laughs> it's, that, it's crazy. But I think it's because we have divorced parents. So naturally, I mean, that's how it is for yeah, me at least. Yeah. So naturally it like doubles a lot of shit. And I just have, I don't know. It, yeah, I, I'm with you on that. But so right now we're, we found the venue, which is exciting. I love the venue. It's, I mean, I think it's beautiful, but um, working on the whole photographer, you know, thing right now, I'm pretty sure I have someone that's going to work with us, but still trying to figure that out. And then I haven't really done any wedding dress or that kind of stuff yet. My sister's coming into town actually in August and is highly pushing us to go. <laughs> so I really don't have a choice. I don't, think I don't have a choice. <laughs> but... But even you've talked about like sometimes you're like, Ugh. oh, there's so many times where I'm like, let's just let's cancel, let's yeah. just go and because, <laughs> and I'm still I'm still thinking like that, but I I can't, I don't know, I'm just so hard, it's very hard. This sounds very stressful, <sighs> way too stressful. Yeah, it is stressful. It's annoying. I love love, but I love love. <laughs> oh my god. Um, yeah, I don't really know what to say on that. It's extremely stressful. I don't like, I honestly like don't really like talking about it because I don't know what to do. <laughs> and I just want to go on a honeymoon. I just want to go on a fucking vacation. Same. That's I, like literally the only thing I care exactly. about. Exactly. I know where I'm going. I'm going to go to Thailand. John and I are going to go to Thailand. I know that. And that's really all I give a shit about. <laughs> I can like see you guys like buying your tickets, like your honeymoon tickets before you guys even oh, like do the marriage, like wedding. I go on <laughs> Expedia all the time and like look up thailand and like look up resorts and look up flights and stuff and i'm like finding out what day to go <laughs> like, or what you know, time of year oh what i think would be really great like beautiful not someone who is going to get married but just a thought yeah would be like a very small intimate destination wedding yeah you, be cool. your partner your most loved ones but then it's like <laughs> so if you like you think about that on paper then you're like oh most loved ones <laughs> right so then you're yeah. like you have some friends and you're like okay but what about this person well, I love this person, but then this person, I can't only invite them and not invite these other people because that would be. It'd be like a mess. Right. Like opening up a can of worms. In my exactly. Life. And I'm like, <sighs> okay, yeah, I guess. I know. No. A part of me just wants to buy flights to go to Mexico this Christmas and just peace out. Like, and then just come back and be like, we're married, bitches, surprise. <laughs> yeah. Just be like, you know what? We got married there. It was, I don't know. I know. That's what I would love to do. But Isn't that eloping? Yeah. Isn't that called eloping? Mm -hmm. I can see you. I can see you eloping. 100%. I'd love to elope. elope. Part of me wants to go to um, Costa Rica, get married, and then fly right from there to Thailand because we got engaged in Costa Rica and I just love in Co Costa Rica. Part of me wants to go to Thailand, get married, just the two of us, and start our honeymoon like right after in Thailand. I feel like that'd be really cool. But then my dogs can't be there. Is it sad that more than anything, I really just <laughs> want my fucking dogs to be in my wedding? <laughs> like, I don't know, man. Oh, it's very stressful. I don't know. Luckily, um, my family's like not that traditional. So it's not like it's, you know, super important. Obviously, like my parents would like to be there to see us get married, but it's not like a it's not like a make or break yeah. type of thing. You know, we're not religious, so it's not like there's that tied to it. Um, so anyways, yeah. All right. There are so many people asking if you 
consume consume the greens. Do you? And if you do, what is your favorite medium to consume through? Um, I think I've smoked the greens once or twice. <laughs> yeah, you can say that. Yeah. <laughs> um, I like wax. I like dabs. All right, that's Fair my enough. favorite way. Sid. Um. Yes, I participate, <laughs> and <laughs> I would say my preferred way is uh a, a joint all right it's like yeah Ooh, very good um when i went to california when i went to california i tried houseplant um seth rogan's wheaties was it good it was good it was really good honestly his little joint packs are so cute um i like to think that he baptizes them himself Ooh, but you know you know so oh they're, yeah yeah they're very cute they're oh, very I love very seth cute. But no one loves Seth on this fucking show more than Kendall. No, nobody lo- no one loves Seth. Seth. No one loves Seth. is a... Or Kendall's the Seth stan. Um, okay, a lot of questions about tattoos. People want to know if you guys have tattoos and if they have a meaning or like what made you want to get them. Um, I'll go first. I have two tattoos. They're very small. One of them's on my wrist right here. It's an address to this old beach house in Rhode Island that Kendall and I grew up going to. She has the exact same tattoo in the same spot says to Rosebriar Ave and it has like a little you can't really see it. it has like a little wave over it um but yeah we grew up going to this beach house like every summer and it's super special to us our grandparents would like rent it every year and so I have that and then on my inside of my foot I have a little paw print um that's like has a little heart inside of it because I fucking love dogs that's all I have how old were you when you got them you remember um I think I was like tw- how old am I I'm 27 I think I was like 20 20- Two, twenty-three, something like that. I can't quite remember. Did you get them like back to back? Yeah, I got them at the same time. Um, I really want more. I'm just super indecisive and can't quite figure out what I want next. But I know I definitely do want more in my life. Ugh. But yeah, that's all I have. What about you? Do you have any tattoos? I do. I have one tattoo it's on the side, my ribs or whatnot. Um, it says serendipity. That's I cool. got it on a whim. I love that. Yes, it's just really embarrassing. But the definition really, you know, I almost feel like I was explaining it wrong at first. But now I I understand because I feel like people take it in different con like yeah. the word serendipity. But it's almost to like find find good like finding something good without looking for it. Almost, I love so, that. I like that. Yeah, when- randomly one day in college, I called yeah, okay. Kendall and he. I was like. Um, I want a tattoo right now. And so she right picked now. me up. We drove and we went to this janky shop. And <laughs> the guy was definitely stoned. Really? He's doing his math homework or something. <laughs> and I was like, uh, you know, oh this is what I want. And he like put that first sticker or whatever thing down. And he walked out. Of the room, and I was like, "Kendall, I don't. I want him to like move it over just a little bit." And she was like, "Then just tell him." And I was like, "Oh, I feel bad." And she was like, "Don't feel bad." And then she's like, "Do you want me to tell him?" I was like, "No, I, that's gonna be weird." But she's like, she doesn't like it there, so <laughs> I got the guts to like say, "Hey, can you put it, move it over a little bit?" And then he kind of got a little pissy, but he got pissy. Shut oh, up. Yeah, he was like, "Oh." Really? Like he just what? didn't want That's it. That's so weak. You should oh, be yeah. so picky with a tattoo. Like even it's, if you want it over like an eighth of a centimeter, you should like they should have no problem doing that. Right. That's fuck? on you forever. They right. should be doing it fifty times over if you ask them to. I know. I was like, I mean, mean being like, oh, okay, thanks so much. I appreciate it. Oh my <laughs> god. So, yeah, it's. I mean, it looks fine. I think at at one point I may get it like retouched. Yeah. Up because it's a little faded or something but yeah it i give you guys props because that hurt like my ribs well hurt. i think ribs is like the most one of the most painful spots you yeah. can get it in my foot hurt more than my wrist but i don't know they're so small like i feel like they barely even count <laughs> look at charlie charlie <laughs> oh he's a bitch. you got a tattoo he's a tattoo he does he has a tattoo from when he got his little balls chopped off he a little tattoo He's handsome pants so that no one could resell him. All right. Thank you, Sid. Mm-hmm. Crowley, what about you? Um, yeah, I have I I have like eight or nine, I think. Um, they're all pretty small though. Um, I think my first one was the one on my ankle on my ankle on my um what's the front part of your like 
Shin? Shin, yep. <laughs> <laughs> on your on my shin. Um it's a um a moth. It's a it's a death head moth. It's um I love Signs of the Lambs. It's like my favorite movie the entire world. Um so I got it as a little ode to that. Um and then I have this axe, which honestly I don't love. I got it. It was a Friday the 13th flash and I was running out of time and I just picked one. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's it's fine. Um, I wish I'd gotten it on this arm so it looks like I was chopping things, but I didn't. Um, <laughs> and then I have a uh, a little rainbow leaf behind my neck. Um, I love rainbows. And oh, I didn't know you had that. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, it's like it's a um, yeah, it's, it's like an it's like a little outline basically. And then I have a um a cow and a calf on my on my side. Very good. Um, love that. I I think I got that for my dad to be on. Like not for my dad, but we I grew up on a little farm and I grew up with my dad like raising cattle and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um and yeah, we had lots of cattle and then cattle. <laughs> cattle, lots of cattle, lots of cattle. <laughs> and then, oh yeah, and then I have this was another little flash, this little flower. My favorite one is this one on my forearm. It's a uh, my Rambo. Mm. So cute. Yes, Who's my dog. My doggy. Yeah, he passed away last mm. 2021. So cute. Yeah, and I got that like a month before he passed. So I have a picture with him with the tattoo. Mm. Um, yeah, and then your big one on your thigh. Oh yeah. And then I have one on my. Oh yeah. Th- oh yeah. I have a, three on this leg. I have a big um, vase, like a floral vase with an eye in it. Mm-hmm. Um, honestly, no, no meaning. I just like. They don't have to have meaning. It just yeah. be fucking something you want on yep. your body. Exactly. And then I have a mountain with like hands underneath it. Colorado. I'm from here. <laughs> I'm from here. <laughs> and then I have some cherry blossoms on my on my ankle. Just, just cause. Love that. Yep. Yep, we're tattooed ladies here. Tat it up. Tat it up. <laughs> I really do want more <laughs> tattoos. So would you get more tattoos? Yeah, I'd be open to getting another one, but I just really, I'm not sure yet. I think the little wildflowers that are like outlined, not filled, yeah. are really pretty, but mm-hmm. I don't really know where. I want to get something having to do with the Grateful Dead. Oh, surprise. A bed? I mean... <laughs> Oh, what? <laughs> a dead a dead bear? That's what oh, I meant to say. A bed? <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe. Or like a rose. I don't know. I go back and forth. Or like a little terrapin. I'm not sure. Ooh, a rose could be cool. And then like you could have, I don't know if there's like a specific album or like the year it came out, like have it intertwined in. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah, I don't know. I always go back and forth. I can't decide. Um, Have you guys had any paranormal experiences ever? Yeah. But like, nothing, like anything specifically that you remember being like, what the fuck? Nothing like profound, I guess. Yeah. Like, I mean, I, I'm like, I believe in the paranormal, but in order to keep my sanity, I talk myself out of it being paranormal. Like, I will, like, I'll be like, oh no, like I'll find a logical explanation sure. for it. Yeah, I think that's pretty normal. So I, yeah, so, I mean, there's like noises that I are unexplained, but I, I mean. I mean, the biggest one was was when I was um, house sitting for Kendall. Oh yeah, and I swear it was like the sound. It was like a whistling sound, and like the 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 screen door was completely closed. Um, it was like noon. It wasn't a it wasn't a, a wolf. It wasn't any animal outside. Yeah. It was like a singing ho- like a singing howl. Like a it honestly sounded like a very like Native American like kind of like oh that's crazy yeah Fall that's, or something yeah which I mean Colorado is filled with well, so is this entire country yeah. I was gonna say it's filled with Native American land but that's kind of stupid to say because this entire this country is, is. Yeah. Uh, yeah but yeah I think that was that was like the I mean the one that I can remember right now is is the, the howling and the singing yeah I remember you telling me about that that's yeah. definitely a little Freaky. little sketch what about you Sid. Anything? Not, nothing that I can like really like tell a story about. I mean, I've had moments of like weird things, but yeah. not necessarily anything too crazy. Yeah. Like something that I don't know if it's just my eyes. Yeah. Or if it's just like something. Yeah. I always like catch like little, like I always catch movements like out of the corner of your eye. Yeah. I have that too. I and I'm like, too. and I literally think there's something like that. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm not sure weird. if that's just everybody gets yeah. that or if it's something paranormal. Yeah. Which I'm pretty, I'm, I mean, I'm sure it's just how we work. But yeah. 
like that's just a normal thing. Sometimes my dogs, I feel like see shit. Oh, that's the worst. Like when they look up in the corner, yeah, they're like, like looking Callie in the corner or something, or like, or you like stand in front of them and like look around you as if there's something behind you. I'm like, can you <laughs> fucking not do that, please, <laughs> you assholes? <laughs> my biggest paranormal experience ever was, I think I've told this on the show before, but um. I was with Josh and Kendall and John. We were in this cabin in the middle of fucking absolute nowhere in Colorado. And it was this A-frame cabin. And John and I were sleeping in this like little loft above, but it was super open. Like you could see the rest of the cabin. It wasn't a big cabin, but it had tons of windows. So you could see out. And then Josh and Kendall had like this um, bedroom in the back, but theirs was like closed off to the rest of the cabin. But anyways, we were there like trying to sleep. It was pitch, I mean, it was pitch black like there's nothing around us and this weird light started like coming on it would start from this sounds so fucking weird we had this futon in the loft where we were staying there was this futon next to our bed and it would start underneath the futon from what i could see and it was like this like led blue light and it would slowly come on and then it would get like really really bright to the point where it would fill up the entire cabin was like super super bright have what? I never told you this? No. Dude, this oh fuck. It was, it, it was like, and it was some, really silent. Like, I, I couldn't hear anything. I didn't think it was coming from the outside because, like I said, from what I, I could tell, it was starting off underneath this couch. And I thought it was like, you know, a, um, like a phone. Like a phone or something to do with like the Wi Fi, like the cable box or something. Yeah. But it, it, it definitely wasn't because it would start off completely pitch black and it would slowly start in this little like ball of light. And then it would grow to light up the entire cabin, like to the point where I could see out the windows. Mind you, it's completely dark outside. There's no outside light. There's no road by us. There's no car lights. There's nothing. There's no houses around us. We're like in a forest. In a, and then there's like a giant field behind us. And it would light up the entire room and then, you know, sit there for a minute or two and then slowly like fade back into complete darkness. And then a few minutes later, it would start up again. And it was doing this like over and over again. And I was so fucking scared, you guys. Like, it, I, I'm sure it was just in my head that I, but I like felt weird too. Like my knees were literally like banging together because I was so freaked out. And John was like, what the fuck is that? And I don't know why, but I was like paralyzed in fear that I didn't even go tell to Kendall and Josh until like an hour after it was happening. And so I tell them and Josh comes out because you know Josh. He's like, oh, hell yeah, I need to fucking see mm-hmm. this. So he comes out and he's, sitting there with us waiting for it and it doesn't fucking happen it like will not happen when he's out there he's sitting there for like 45 minutes i'm like okay it's not he's like okay i'm gonna go back in then he's like tell me though if it happens goes back in his room starts up again weird it was the so weird and like john saw it too oh john saw it too he was like i don't know what the fuck that is i was so fucking scared because it, it it had like no explanation and the way the light it wasn't like a little light from like the you know modem like or orb something. light it was like like not it's like, an, like, like a parent. something calling in or like I don't know what it that's I don't know crazy. but it's start, from what I could tell it started from like right by where we were sleeping right under this fucking futon which I was I pull my flashlight out and like turn the lights and I was looking under it there was nothing under there no. it would just and then it would get so bright to where it would light up the entire fucking a frame and like the because granted we were mind you we were on a um, we were in the loft, so it was above, and then so then below us was like the entire living room and everything. It would light that entire. It was light up the entire thing, and it wasn't flashing or anything like that. It what? would just slowly, you know, start from nothing, slowly grow, slowly grow, light up the entire A-frame, and then slowly fade back down into nothing. What color was it? What color was like the light? bright, like LED blue, like. You know. And you looked like it wasn't like there was literally nothing that was. Like where is the light coming from? It would you couldn't like see underneath the futon. I feel like it was like a little like extraterrestrial, maybe. To be That's honest, crazy because I don't I don't know. Maybe it's you guys scared. just energies in that room or like, it scared the living shit out of me. Though. I would have been terrified. <laughs> and yeah. the thing is, is it was an old ass cabin. There was no AC and it was hot, so we had all the windows open. Um, and then. I started getting scared. I was like, what if it's someone who's outside with like a flashlight shining it in or trying to fuck with us? So we, you know, locked all the windows and everything. And it, I don't, I, it was so, there was no wind either during that um, time, but there was tons of trees around us. So if there had been wind or something, like you would have been able to hear it, but it was 
dead silent. Was it dead silent? None of this really matters. But what season was it? You remember? Oh, like September. Okay. It was re- it was scary. That's probably the most paranormal thing. I mean, like I said, it could. I don't know. I'm trying to think. Like, oh, it could have been a car driving by, but like, no, it wasn't because you know when cars drive by, like there, it's a warm light that comes in, and you can like see it passing like on your walls, like as they drive. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. But it. There were no roads around us. There were no people around us, as far as I could tell. It wasn't the moon, because I so I was looking at the moonlight, and it was, you know, looked the same the whole time. It was so, so bright. It looked like, at the peak of when it was really bright, it looked like someone had a spotlight outside, you know, 40, 50 feet in the air, and was, like, shining into our thing. But I don't think it was coming from the outside, because from what I could tell, it started in the loft that we were in. That's really Really I'll never forget it. It was the weirdest thing. And it really bothers me to this day that I tried calling Josh and Kendall out and they were like standing out there for 45 minutes and it just would not happen. And then they like went back to bed and it started happening again. And then for some reason, like I was literally just too petrified and scared to like try and film it or try and get them to come out. I don't know. I feel like people are going to think I'm making this up. I swear I'm not making this up. You can ask John. It was fucking scary. Yeah, that, that's my paranormal experience. That's <laughs> <laughs> didn't didn't enjoy that honestly now that i think about it like i think i've had just like weird occurrences where like i remember this one time i was at home i was thinking of what like somebody we did a video on yeah like and like i was really really thinking about them and um i don't know like i just like obviously got like overcome with emotions but when as soon as i started thinking about them it was like a remote control for the light and the and the fan um and it had never really like turned off on its own before yeah but it was, like as soon as i started thinking about this person the light like shut off oh that's creepy but like things like that have happened but again like it, weird it, timing and weird stuff. timing yeah yeah like i can't really like necessarily like s- tell the stories per se because i kind of forget them but just like weird timings of things um to piggyback off that a lot of people are asking if this studio is haunted no not as far as i could tell um, I don't go in the lights hour room because I hate going in there. So I don't know what goes on in there. But as far as this area, good vibes only. Good vibes. That's how I would like to keep it. Let's end it on this. What is your biggest fears? I will go first. My biggest fear is moths or just bugs in general, but mostly moths and death. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> what about your, you guys? My biggest fear is um, drowning or being in a situation where I am in water, near water, and I cannot get out. That is my biggest fear. Yep. That's fucking scary. Yeah. Um, My biggest fear is, oh, suffocating. And then I also am, in, am terrified of like all, you know, rats, lizards, mice, <laughs> anything <laughs> like that at like Any legitimately terrifies me. Like I snakes. Oh, snakes worse. Like my my like feet and my hands will like curl up curl and up, I can't yeah. really move. Like it's bad. And it's I don't know why. Never had an incident with one. Well, I mean, we had a mouse one time in our house and my dad was trying to catch it and was like I was screaming at the top of my lungs. Oh my so <laughs> Yeah. I mean I don't know why. I just they don't they don't uh give me the Good feeling, yeah. <laughs> that would give me a good feeling. No good vibes from the mice. <laughs> oh my god! All right, guys. Um, I think that's where we're gonna end it here. You sent in a fucking lot of questions, so thank you. I'm sorry we didn't get to get to them all, but I hope this kind of gave you some insight on who Corelli and Sid are. Next week we have a super fun episode. We're gonna play a game. And it involves eating things. <laughs> so I'm very excited for that. Um, so be sure to keep your eyes peeled. Ew. Kendall hates that thing. Keep <laughs> your eyes peeled. <laughs> and thanks for hanging out with us this week, you guys, and for participating in our episode. And we will see you on the next sesh. But until then, ladies, say it with me. Keep, keep it, it fresh. fresh.